From the Samsung Production Studios in the heart of Hazleton, Pennsylvania, it's your News 13, brought to you by SSP TV and the Standard Speaker. It's a story of little hearts reaching out to elected officials to make sure they continue to get the help and support they need. A very special legislative tour of Helping Hands Society, our top story on News 13 for this Thursday. Good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Kathy Bozinski. It does amazing work to help children who face a number of challenges, and it requires funding to continue that help. Christina Papa is here now to tell us how the Helping Hands Society invited our members of the legislature in hopes of keeping that support coming. Christina? Thanks, Kathy. Well, the faculty at Helping Hands definitely have some big hearts. The Learning Center opened its doors today to give a tour of the fa facility to state elected officials. But what the legislators didn't know is that they would be getting a song and a dance as well. Donald's two-year-old son is just as playful as the rest of the bunch, but something was different with Donald Jr. He was having trouble learning. It was, it was realized about a little over a year ago that he was having some issues with his vocabulary and everything like that. And uh, he was having a tough time talking and uh, word saying and all that. He knew he had to find help for his son, but it wasn't until Donald found helping hands that he saw improvements in his son's vocabulary. I mean, he's, he's, in a, he's only been in helping hands program about six weeks and, and the change and the, and the uh, growth in him, in, especially in seeing his vocabulary, his hand-and-eye coordination is just unbelievable. Today, state elected officials toured Helping Hands and were able to see firsthand how young children like Donald Jr. get the help they need. Good job! High five! Funding for the Learning Center is a major issue for the faculty. We are always struggling financially and we need to do things with this building and I hope that today that will help that a little bit too, but any donations or in any way, you know, sometimes just volunteer your time or your help. Mary Beth has been working at Helping Hands in Hazleton for over 15 years. She says she gets payment for her work in a different way. It's not a career, it's a calling. And it's not about the money or the income, it's about knowing that you made a difference in someone's life. But the staff's work hasn't gone unnoticed. These folks really go above and beyond. It's not about the dollars, it's about the children. And so uh, I'm going to certainly work with Representative Toohill, Mayor Inouye, Congressman Barletta, work with all our colleagues to try to get the resources that these organizations need. The students made these one-of-a-kind hearts to show how much they appreciate all the support they receive. The teachers who work here say helping the students really is a matter of the heart. The uh, loving staff, parents, Board of Directors, you're constant, the children, you're constantly surrounded by people that just, from their heart, are, are givers and they just want to help. As for Donald, he's looking forward to the progress his son will make with the helping hearts of Helping Hands. Now, Helping Hands is a nonprofit agency and are always looking for donations. Their next event is the Diamond Ball Drop. If you'd like more information about the event or how to donate, you can call Helping Hands at the number at the bottom of your screen or go to their website, helpinghandsociety.com. Kathy? Thanks, Christina. Those kids are absolutely precious. Well, the Schuylkill County Coroner says he's working hard to make his office more efficient and to save taxpayer dollars. Dr. David Moreland says he's gone advanced tech from maintaining office records to performing virtual autopsies. The main accomplishment is that of the virtual autopsy, which we initiated last March, and we've studied uh, decedents uh, in the area, both from natural uh, deaths from uh, trauma and even some forensic cases. We have about uh, 200 studies that have been performed and it has really uh, given us uh, extensive information about the cause of death and we hope to um, capitalize on this in uh, years to come. Now, Dr. Moylan works out of the Simon Kramer Institute in New Philadelphia, where he's expecting to attract physicians and coroners from all over the region to the 11th Annual Cancer Symposium being held in April.
A local fire company that's been deactivated by local government is now being ordered to turn over all its records. The East Union Township Board of Supervisors has given the Citizens Fire Company of Brandonville until Monday to turn over all its company records. Supervisors ordered the volunteer fire company to shut down due to a dwindling roster of certified firefighters. Supervisors then ordered citizens to turn over its records, including company and social club officers, member certifications, insurance and financial documents. Based on what it finds in those documents, the township will take action, perhaps even holding a public hearing. With citizens shut down, neighboring volunteer companies, including Shepton Oneida, are covering the service area. Well, even though it was a frightening situation, a fire in Schuylkill County today gave new meaning to the term drive up service. This truck was traveling along Route 54 when the driver noticed that something on the rear of the cab was burning. Rather than pull over, the driver headed to the hometown fire company. Crews at the station were able to put the flames out. Fortunately, that driver wasn't injured. Well, if you use the bus system to get to work or school, listen up. The Hazleton Public Transit System is making some route changes starting next week. Bus route changes that could affect you. As of Monday, there will be a new route to Humboldt Industrial Park and additional scheduled ones runs on the Wilkes-Barre and McAdoo routes. Along with the additions, the 2.30 run on Route 50 and the 3 o'clock run for Route 60 have been eliminated. But good news for riders, the system's new GPS feature will track the buses while they're on the roads and be helpful for folks folks waiting at the stops. Uh, another big thing we're going to be starting is our AVL system. And what that is, it's a GPS system that the buses can be tracked. You can look on your cell phones and see if you're waiting at one spot, how long till the bus gets there. If you don't have the technology in your phones to do that, in our station, there's monitors up. You can look and see where, where your bus is. And if you want complete service details on the new route, you can visit Hazleton Public Transit online at www.ridehpt.com. At least for the time being, there won't be any beefed up rental ordinance in the city of Hazleton. City Council met Wednesday evening to discuss several items, including a stricter rental property ordinance. The ordinance would have toughened restrictions on rental properties that would have fined owners for things like peeling paint, loose handrails, and no window screens. Council decided to table the ordinance due to a number of questions posed by property owners who charged the city is just looking for random ways to bring in more revenue. The city um, uh, to drop this ordinance, it needs to be uh, removed. Um, it's not going to address negligent landlords. There are other ways to address negligent landlords. We have uh, brought it to their attention, and um, they're not seeking. It's been proven over and over again by the actions that this is a revenue generator. But council does say the ordinance may be revisited in the future. And still ahead on News 13, all anybody seems to be talking about is how much snow we may or may not be getting tomorrow. We'll have the very latest in News 13 weather. And how ready is PennDOT if we do get dumped on big time? We'll have your storm ready info when News 13 continues. Well, it looks like Punxsutawney Phil just might be off his game a little bit. While he predicted in early spring, apparently Mother Nature has other plans. So, are we ready for more snow? Matthew Petrillo tells us, at least PennDOT is. The National Weather Service has issued a winter storm watch from Friday through Sunday in the region. But if you need to be on the road, James May of PennDOT has got you covered. We have over 50,000 uh, tons of salt right now ready to, get ready to go. We also have 300,000 gallons of brine. Uh, we have 200 plow trucks that are ready. What we're doing right now is watching the weather reports and seeing when this snow is going to come in. But as soon as it comes in, we'll be ready to go with that. Most of the snow will be dumped between Maine and New York. But depending on where you are, the Luzerne County area can expect to see anywhere from one to four inches of snow and freezing rain. May says clearing the snow from the 4,000 miles of roads that the Luzerne County PennDOT covers poses challenges. It's a huge operation, a big undertaking, but we, we feel like we're ready to go. And if you're driving in the snow, May says, make sure your seatbelt is always on, you bring a fully charged cell phone with you, and that you have the proper tires to drive. Matthew Petrillo, News 13, Ashley. And here we go. Time now for our regional weather from the National Weather Service. Checking the radar. Not a whole lot really going on today, but give it 24 hours. It's going to be an interesting Friday. Our creative condition, kind of like the calm before the storm. It's by first grader Jaden Culp, a student at Valley Elementary. And there she is out for a stroll on a beautiful day with blue skies and sunshine. So not like tomorrow. 
Now let's take a look at News 13 weather from the National Weather Service for Greater Hazleton. Tonight, flurries overnight, but no accumulation, low down to around 23. Then for Friday, snow through the day with an accumulation of about two inches tapering off through the evening, high near 32 degrees, low around 16. Heading on over to Schuylkill County tonight, snow showers overnight, again, no accumulation, low down to 24 degrees. And Friday, rain and freezing rain likely, possibly mixed with snow early, and then rain and snow continuing into the evening. New snow accumulation of one to three inches possible, nighttime low down to 20 big degrees. Well, talk about a terrific way to spend an evening, doing some professional networking while getting the spa treatment. Professional women who are members of the Greater Hazleton Chamber of Commerce gathered to mix and mingle in one luxurious setting, the famous spa and salon last night. In a new twist on networking, the chamber invited the women to meet others in the business community while enjoying a manicure, pedicure, massage, or some hairstyling. Uh, the members, they join the chamber in order to get exposure for their business, and that's the, the purpose of tonight's uh, mixer. It's beautiful in here. Um, it's a huge, very clean space. Um, it's kind of another one of Hazleton's little, little secret treasures. That's one way to mix and mingle. The Chamber's next Ladies' Night Out event is coming up on April 3rd at Carmen's Country Inn and Gardens in Drums. And let's check the winning midday lottery numbers. Good luck if you played our daily number 485. Big four, four, seven, one, two. Quinto is 22530. And Treasure Hunt, 2911-2530. Hope you won. Good evening, everyone, and here's tonight's Talk of the Town report. First tonight, in celebration of Heart Month, the Greater Hazelton Health Alliance will be offering a free heart healthy screening. Friday, February 15th from 2 to 4 p.m. at the Hazleton Health and Wellness Center. The event will include blood pressure, pulse, and heart rhythm screenings. Pre-registration is required and space is limited. For more information, please call 570-501-6204. Also tonight, Bonanza Steakhouse by the Laurel Mall will be holding a fundraiser for the Hazel Township Fire Department, February 25th, 26th, and 27th. Contact the fire department for a certificate and 20% of your food order will be donated to the fire company. For more info, please call 570-454-8767. And finally tonight, the Haven for Women will be having their annual Sweetheart Chocolate Sale, which will be held at St. Gabriel's Church February 9th and 10th after all masses. Please come and buy some sweets and help the Haven out at the same time. That's tonight's Talk of the Town. News 13 would like to send sincere condolences to the family and friends of these recently departed. Richard B. Iggy Lewis, formerly of Millsville, funeral will be held Saturday at 10 a.m. from the Hauk and Gophis Funeral Home. Friends make all Friday from 6 to 8 p.m. And Helen F. Wargo, formerly of Hazleton, funeral is Saturday at 11 a.m. at the St. John's Evangelical Lutheran Church. Friends make all Saturday from 10 to 11 a.m. Arrangements are under the direction of the Frank J. Bonin Funeral Home. Tonight's obituaries have been brought to you by the Smilax Floral Shop located on 15th Street in Hazleton. Free delivery to all local funeral homes, call 570-454-0111. And by Mia's, once again the Hazleton area's number one rated restaurant, call 570-501-3410 for information on luncheon packages. Get ready for a super Holy Family time. I'm here with some seventh grade students at Holy Family Academy today talking soup. Claudia, can you tell me what was the, uh, what, did, what did you donate and where are you donating this soup to? Well, we donated soup cans to Catholic Social Services and we will be bringing them there and then we'll pass them out to everyone who needs them. And so this soup, you guys uh, donate soup around the same time. Why is it so special at this time? Well, Super Sunday is kind of with Super Bowl Sunday, so it kind of matches. Yeah, and, and you obviously try to, you know, donate more and more soup every year. Joseph, can you tell me what, how many soup cans were you hoping to donate this year, and did you make your goal? 400 cans of soup, and yes, we broke our goal. So you def that was last year's goal of 400 cans, so this year you guys you went over that, you made a touchdown kind of for your school and, and, and made more. That's great. So what's... What's the best part of donating all of these things for you? Well, it's really nice. We've been doing it at Holy Family Academy for years now, and it helps out people in need. 
so it's just a nice thing to do for them. Very cool. I'm really proud of you guys for doing all that. Claudia, you guys are part of Students of Service, and you guys do a lot of projects for the community. Can you explain maybe some projects going on in the near future? Yes, actually we're starting a project for Little Sisters of the Poor, and we're going to be donating cereal and lotion and tissues, just anything for like the winter time. Very cool, and that kind of goes with, you know, winter theme too. The soup is a perfect, it's a perfect time to, you know, get some soup in people's bellies because it's a little chilly outside, but thank you guys so much for coming out tonight. I mean, Joseph, are, are you excited maybe about doing this again next year? Do you see the, uh, the Holy Family doing it again for oncoming years? Yes, definitely, and I hope we have a larger goal next year. I agree. Thank you guys so much again. And I know maybe your teams didn't win, but definitely the kids and the families who will receive the soups definitely won on both teams. So that's this week's Holy Family Time, and we'll see you guys next week. And that was one super job. Well, plenty more news and information headed your way on News 13. A frightening episode over the weekend has the Schuylkill County Medical Center tightening its security. That story and much more news when the 13 crew comes right back. A man is under arrest after he went to a Pottsville hospital to visit a friend and then went on a rampage destroying thousands of dollars in life-saving equipment. What the hospital's doing to make sure this won't happen again. Our top story on News 13 at 430. From the Samsung Production Studios in the heart of Hazleton, Pennsylvania, it's your News 13. Good evening and thanks so much for staying with us tonight. I'm Kathy Bazinski. Well, uh, an, an incident over the weekend has uh, actually put a hospital in Schuylkill County on alert. Matthew Bracillo has more in this report. 34-year-old Larry Dettery didn't have a doctor's appointment when he broke into the Schuylkill Health Medical Center on Jackson Street Sunday. Dettery, who is from Shenandoah, damaged three of this center's four operating rooms. He caused more than $6,600 in repairs. Now, the Department of State does not require any specific regulations related to security in hospitals, but officials here at the medical center are trying to prevent another mishap. The hospital will now increase security at two of its Pottsville locations, but it's unclear when the improvements will take place. Hospital officials did not return calls before airtime to comment. Pottsville police charged Duttery with criminal trespass, criminal mischief, public drunkenness, and other related charges. Now, hospital officials are seeking damages. Matthew Pachillo, News 13, Pottsville. Well, the Schuylkill County coroner says he's working hard to make his office more efficient and to save taxpayer dollars. Dr. David Moreland says he's gone advanced tech from maintaining office records to performing virtual autopsies. The main accomplishment is that of the virtual autopsy, which we initiated last March, and we've studied uh, decedents uh, in the area, both from natural uh, deaths, from uh, trauma, and even some forensic cases. We have about uh, 200 studies that have been performed, and it has really uh, given us uh, extensive information about the cause of death and we hope to um, capitalize on this in uh, years to come. Dr. Moylan works out of the Simon Kramer Institute in New Philadelphia, where he's expecting to attract physicians and coroners from all over the region to the 11th annual cancer symposium being held there in April. Well, even though it was a frightening situation, a fire in Schuylkill County today gave new meaning to the term drive-up service. This truck was traveling along Route 54 when the driver noticed that something at the rear of the cab was burning. Rather than pull over, the driver headed to the hometown fire company. Crews at the station were able to put the flames out. Fortunately, the driver wasn't injured. A local fire company that's been deactivated by local government is now being ordered to turn over all its records. The East Union Township Board of Supervisors has given the Citizens Fire Company of Brandonville until Monday to turn over all its company records. The supervisors ordered the volunteer fire company to shut down due to a dwindling roster of certified firefighters. Supervisors then ordered citizens to turn over all its records, including company and social club officers, member certifications, insurance and financial documents, based on what it finds in those documents, the township will then take action, perhaps even holding a public hearing. With citizens shut down, neighboring volunteer companies, including Shepton Oneida, are covering the service area. 
Well, at least for the time being, there won't be any beefed up rental ordinance in the city of Hazleton. City Council met last night to discuss several items, including a stricter rental property ordinance. This ordinance would have toughened restrictions on rental properties that would have fined owners for things like peeling paint, loose handrails, and no window screens. Council decided to table the ordinance due to a number of questions posed by property owners who charge that the city is just looking for random ways to bring in more revenue. The city um, um, to drop this ordinance, it needs to be uh, removed. Um, it's not going to address negligent landlords. There are other ways to address negligent landlords. We have uh, brought it to their attention, and um, they're not seeking. It's been proven over and over again by the actions that this is a revenue generator. Council says the ordinance may be revisited at some point in the future. Well, it does amazing work to help children who face a number of challenges, and it requires funding to continue that help. Christina Papa tells us how the Helping Hand Society invited our regional members of the legislature in hopes of keeping their support coming. Donald's two-year-old son is just as playful as the rest of the bunch, but something was different with Donald Jr. He was having trouble learning. It was, it was realized about a little over a year ago that he was having some issues with his vocabulary and everything like that. And uh, he was having a tough time talking and uh, word saying and all that. He knew he had to find help for his son, but it wasn't until Donald found helping hands that he saw improvements in his son's vocabulary. I mean, he's, he's, in a, he's only been in helping hands program about six weeks in, and the change in the, and the uh, growth in him, in, especially in seeing his vocabulary, his hand and eye coordination is just unbelievable. Today, state elected officials toured helping hands and were able to see firsthand how young children like Donald Jr. get the help they need. Good job. High five. Funding for the Learning Center is a major issue for the faculty. We are always struggling financially and we need to do things with this building and I hope that today that will help that a little bit too but any donations or in any way, you know, sometimes just volunteer your time or your help. Mary Beth has been working at Helping Hands in Hazleton for over 15 years. She says she gets payment for her work in a different way. It's not a career, it's a calling. And it's not about the money or the income, it's about knowing that you made a difference in someone's life. But the staff's work hasn't gone unnoticed. These folks really go above and beyond. It's not about the dollars, it's about the children. And so uh, I'm going to certainly work with Representative Tuhill, Mayor Inouye, Congressman Barletta, work with all our colleagues to try to get the resources that these organizations need. The students made these one-of-a-kind hearts to show how much they appreciate all the support they receive. The teachers who work here say helping the students really is a matter of the heart. The uh, loving staff, parents, board of directors, you're constant, the children, you're constantly surrounded by people that just from their heart are, are givers and they just want to help. As for Donald, he's looking forward to the progress his son will make with the helping hearts of Helping Hands. Christina Papa, News 13, Hazleton. And coming up on News 13, as much snow info as we've got at the moment, when the flakes will fall and how much we'll see in this area, and how ready has PennDOT to handle whatever falls. We'll tell you how ready crews are to hit the road just ahead on News 13. Well, it looks like Punxsutawney Phil just might be a little off his game. While he predicted in early spring, Mother Nature apparently has other plans. So are we ready for more snow? Matthew Petrillo tells us at least PennDOT is. The National Weather Service has issued a winter storm watch from Friday through Sunday in the region. But if you need to be on the road, James May of PennDOT has got you covered. We have over 50,000 uh, tons of salt right now ready to, get ready to go. We also have 300,000 gallons of brine. Uh, we have 200 plow trucks that are ready. What we're doing right now is watching the weather reports and seeing when this snow is going to come in. But as soon as it comes in, we'll be ready to go with that. Most of the snow will be dumped between Maine and New York, but depending on where you are, the Luzerne County area can expect to see anywhere from one to four inches of snow and freezing rain. May says clearing the snow from the 4,000 miles of roads that the Luzerne County PennDOT covers poses challenges. It's a huge operation, a big undertaking, but we, we feel like we're ready to go. And if you're driving in the snow, May says, make sure your seatbelt is always on, you bring a fully charged cell phone with you, and that you have the proper tires to drive. Matthew Petrillo, News 13, Ashley.
And time now for our regional weather from the National Weather Service. Let's get to a check on the radar. Not really that much moving through. A few flurries here and there right now, but give it 24 hours. Gonna get interesting. Our creative condition, kind of like the calm before the storm. It's by first grader Jaden Culp, a student at Valley Elementary. And there she is out for a stroll on a beautiful day with blue skies and sunshine. So not like tomorrow. Now let's take a look at News 13 weather from the National Weather Service for Greater Hazleton. Tonight, flurries overnight with no accumulation, low around 23 degrees. Now for Friday, snow, snow throughout the day with an accumulation of about 2 inches, tapering off through the evening, high near 32 degrees, low down to 16 degrees. Well, Saturday, partly sunny and blustery with a high near 23. Nighttime low going down to 6 big degrees. On Sunday, mostly sunny with a high near 33. Chance of some freezing rain at night, though, with a low down to 25. And for Monday, a chance of rain or freezing rain in the morning with a high near 40 degrees. On to Schuylkill County, tonight, snow showers overnight with no accumulation, low around 24. And for tomorrow, rain and freezing rain likely possibly mixed with snow early and then rain and snow continuing into the evening. New snow accumulation of about one to three inches possible. Nighttime low tomorrow around 20 degrees. Then for Saturday, partly sunny and blustery with a high near 29. Overnight low around nine degrees. Sunday, mostly sunny with a high all the way up to 37. Chance of freezing rain at night though with a low of 23. And Monday, a chance of rain, maybe some freezing rain mixed in with it. A high though up to 42 degrees. Well, if you use the bus system to get to work or to school, listen up. The Hazleton Public Transit System making some route changes starting next week. Bus route changes that could affect you. As of Monday, there will be a new route to Humboldt Industrial Park and additional scheduled runs on the Wilkes-Barre and McAdoo routes, along with the additions, the 2.30 run on Route 50 and the 3 o'clock run for Route 60, eliminated. But the good news for riders, the system's new GPS feature will track the buses while they're on the roads and be very helpful for folks who are waiting at the bus stops. Uh, another big thing we're going to be starting is our AVL system. And what that is, it's a GPS system that the buses can be tracked. You can look on your cell phones and see if you're waiting at one spot, how long till the bus gets there. If you don't have the technology in your phones to do that in our station, there's monitors up. You can look and see where, where your bus is. That's pretty cool. Now, if you want complete service details on the new routes, you can visit Hazleton Public Transit online at ridehbt.com. And still ahead on News 13, it was one super Sunday. Now, we're talking tomato, chicken noodle, vegetable, as some local kids collect for a local food pantry. And then how to get the full spa treatment while advancing your business at the same time. We'll take you to one relaxing networking session when News 13 continues. SSP TV Sports on News 13 with Fred Barletta Jr. Well, we know when the calendar gets to February, we're coming down the home stretch. We've talked about it with basketball, both boys and girls, but in swimming, the same thing's going on. And although a lot of people don't follow the standings as closely there, you really should because the Hazleton area Cougars and Lady Cougars are still right in the thick of things. And so they needed a couple of wins yesterday when they were hosting Wyoming Seminary. And down to the auditorium we go. You're taking a look at some of the boys' action right here. And uh, what's going on? First of all, this was senior night, so this is the last home swim meet for the Cougars. But uh, they needed this one because, well, uh, Sim, kind of team that's been scuffling a little bit, so you want to put them away, and uh, they did. The highlight of the match, well, uh, Jeff Hicks recorded his 1,000th point for the boys, and uh, some of the usual suspects, the uh, Ryan Paisleys and company, got the job done. And when uh, it was put on the board, it was Hazleton coming away with the big win. Their record is now 5-1. and one. Now, uh, Dallas still has not been beaten, and the Cougars' one loss came to them, but you never know. If Dallas can get upended, Hazleton would still be in the uh, Wyoming Valley race. Now, meanwhile, on the girls' side of things, you're taking a look at the girls dismantling Wyoming Sim. They had a very easy time of them. Now, uh, you always know some of the names that are involved with the girls swimming, but uh, take a look at this one. Alex Podlesny, she won one, she won two, she won three relays. She was part of three winning relays. That's very impressive. And the Hazleton girls just had no problem putting away Sim. The diving was pretty good as well. 
the uh, Cougars have some very talented divers, and that'll be very big going in the district. Now, here's the deal with the girls. They are 6-0. and all. Wyoming Valley West is 6-0. and all. And if that continues, these two teams square off next week up at Wyoming Valley West, and the conference title will be on the line. So it's getting interesting, as we said. Let's go to wrestling, where yesterday the uh, Cougars came close, but uh, didn't get it done. Wyoming area outlast them 42-36. Hazleton area just uh, really coming down the stretch the wrong way. They're going to have two more dual meets before they go in the districts. And it looks like the district thing, individual style, is going to be all they're going to be able to salvage out of this season. Now, scheduling today. E girls basketball game, Wyoming Valley West at Hazleton area, tip off at uh, 7.15 there. Holy Redeemer visits MMI, Monoy goes to Nativity, Weatherly and Marion, North Schuylkill Blue Mountain and Tamaqua Panther Valley. There are Schuylkill League games for girls basketball. One boys Schuylkill League game to tell you about. It's senior night down at Tamaqua, Panther Valley will be in town. College basketball, Ball State got rolled over yesterday by Ohio and Bloomsburg got trimmed by Millersville. You can see Alyssa Flanagan, Brianna Dudek did contribute, but the Lady Huskies just short to the Marauders. National Hockey League, Devils skating at home against Tampa, Rangers entertaining the Islanders, Florida into the Wells Fargo to take on the Flyers in Washington and Pittsburgh. That's your NHL highlights for tonight. And we're brought to you by Bottled X, where tonight it's Rack 'em Up Rib Night. They're racking up their flavor with fire grilled ribs. You get a half rack of meaty, fall off the bone, St. Louis style spare ribs, and it is smothered in that sweet barbecue sauce. They fire grill it and serve it with bottomless fries for just $9.95. And oh, don't forget, huge imported beer selection, pool, dart, shuffleboard. Good time waiting for you up at Bottled X. And finally for now, talk about a terrific way to spend an evening doing some professional networking while getting the spa treatment. Professional women who are members of the Greater Hazelton Chamber of Commerce gathered to mix and mingle in one luxurious setting last night, the famous spa and salon. In a new twist on networking, the chamber invited the women to meet others in the business community while enjoying a manicure, pedicure, massage, or some hairstyling. Uh, the members, they joined the chamber in order to get exposure for their business, and that's the the purpose of tonight's uh, mixer. It's beautiful in here. Um, it's a huge, very clean space. Um, it's kind of another one of Hazleton's little, little secret treasures. And the Chamber's next Ladies' Night event is coming up on April 3rd at Carmen's Country Inn and Gardens in Drums. Like a great time. Well, that's News 13 for your Thursday. Thank you so much for joining us. You can catch this newscast again with rebroadcasts throughout tonight or just go to News 13's website any old time, ssptv.com, where you'll always find the local and regional news you need and the community news you want. For the entire News 13 team, thank you so much for joining us. I'm Kathy Bazinski. Have a great night.